newest thing. Gun gets my go True boy for you. Hey everybody, this is Rish. And this is Big. And we're coming back. We're back. That's right. And we're back. <laughs> that was Journey with Separate Ways. Coming up next, we got some Mr. Mr. Back in the public eye due to that god-awful train song. <laughs> No, we 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 were talking about your trip to Hey Soul Sister. Oh gosh, that song <laughs> sucks. He actually says I'm so thug in one of the lines. Ew. Oh. Dude, you are so thug. You're living the thug life with Zach and Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll do a the new version. They had the sweet life with Zach and Cody and then the sweet life on deck and now it's the thug life with Zach and Cody. And they, they lose all their money and the uh, Bernie Madoff takes all their money. Nice. <laughs> they wind up having to live in South Central. <laughs> Join a gang, the thug life. Okay, Sorry. so what we actually were talking about was your trip to Oh, it wasn't the thug Cali- life. Southern California. <laughs> no, we'll get to that, do it at, at any point. Are we going to talk about Zach and Cody? Let's make a pact right now that we will not mention Zach and Cody mm. ever. ever. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I make no promises. I love those guys. They're so funny. Okay. So, anyways, yeah, we were we were about to get to uh, Disneyland, which was part of my trip. Okay. Well, tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. Did you get very far? Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Okay. Yeah, so that was uh, the the second day. We checked that out. The third day we went to Disneyland. First time your children had been to Disneyland. It was the your first wife? time. My first time for my wife as well. It's third time that I've been to Disneyland and I've also been to Disney World once. So mm-hmm. wasn't as new for me. But I wanted to make sure they got all the Disney experience, you know what I mean? There's a lot of iconic kind of things that are at Disneyland. You know, they have the various rides that have been... Some of them have been there since 1955 or whenever it was that it opened. And there's... It's interesting because Disney is really heavy on the animatronic figurine things going on. You know, you have Abe Lincoln right inside the entryway doing his whole Hall of Presidents thing. And you have uh, the Carousel of Progress where they have the animatronic figures. They're everywhere. They're all over the different rides. You know, some of them, you can skip the Abe Lincoln or you cannot. It depends on whatever you think is the coolest, but there's some that you have. I don't remember ever seeing the Abe Lincoln. Oh, really? I saw it. I think the first two times I went. I know I didn't see it when we went to Disney World when I was an adult. So I made sure we went on It's a Small World. I made sure we went to the Haunted Mansion. And some of these things, maybe we could have skipped or not. But Mr. I, Toad's I, Wild Ride? We did skip that one, actually. We did go into the Tiki 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 Room. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which, that one I didn't suggest you skip. But you liked it. You had a good time. I remember all those things fondly. And I know the kids don't think of it as the highlight of the day. But I think they enjoyed themselves as well. And we have some Disney music compilation type CDs and, you know, the Tiki Room is one of the songs that's on there. So they already knew the main song. You know, there's several other songs in the middle as well. But 15 Minutes of Your Life, I've wasted more than that on worse things. But yeah. So your children's idea of Disney nostalgia would be very different from yours or mine. I mean, like, your youngest daughter would be excited you know, if they made a plaque for his, like, Demi Lovato did her first <laughs> line of Coke in this spot. You know, things like that. Okay, you know, I would be pretty impressed to go there, too, I think. Yeah. But but just uh, the, the idea of Disneyland... See, I didn't grow up in Southern California either. But the idea of Disneyland was this faraway magical place. Right. And, uh, and most people who don't grow up in Southern California have that same... Even, you know, my wife, who's Canada, yeah, she had that same idea. And I know that her sister... And I just thought, holy crap, this is the worst idea ever. But I think more than what, both of her sisters on their honeymoon went to Disneyland. You know, I, what? one of my but, best friends, his sister did that. They got married like on the beach in L.A. And then, they, yeah, they had their honeymoon. And, and I was just like, oh, that's the coolest thing. I got to do that, too. Uh, can I marry your sister? And it just never <laughs> happened. But, you know, there's things that you want to do on a honeymoon. And sitting through the small world just is not number one on my list. 
But I wanted to make sure the kids did get that iconic experience. They were able to at least go on those rides that everybody goes to at least once. So we went to the Tiki Room. We went on the Jungle Cruise, which is, you know, it's not a fabulous ride. And it's the same as it was when I went there as a kid. And we went to the Small World. We, we went on the Teacups. You know, we got on there and we spun around. And I was... Every child has to vomit on the teacup. <laughs> I was doing that too. I'm like, oh, we're going to spin so much. You guys are going to puke. Oh, just you wait. And we got on there and I spun it and I spun it as much as I could. And they were like having fun. They spun it too. And when, we, when it was done... I was the one that was sick, and they were just like, come on, let's go to the next ride. And I was just like, okay, hold on a minute. <sighs> okay, okay, hold on no, one more minute. We went to the Dumbo ride, which is right next to yeah. it um, afterwards, and I think it was when we were finally getting off of the Dumbo ride that I was actually over the stomach turning in, uh, in circles. But yeah, we went to all of those. Uh, I was kind of a little bit bummed because we went in December, and in December, they do the park all up for the holidays. They do all sorts of stuff. Real snow, I'd heard. Um, maybe it's actual ice. I don't know. I didn't get any of it to actually land on me. I thought they had a me. snow machine, you know, where they put like big blocks of ice in it and it, it, and it sprays it up into the air. It could be. I only saw it. I didn't. It's actually... just asbestos, right? <laughs> Ground <laughs> I be surprised. Up. It's the the cornflakes painted white that they used in "It's a Wonderful Life." Clarence. <laughs> They do all that kind of stuff. They have a big Christmas parade. They do fireworks. And then they have the real snow spray out, which that's neat, I guess, if you live somewhere south and never see snow. But for some reason, it just didn't excite me because I was trying to get out of the snow by going to Disneyland in December. And it's just that like, sense. that's nice snow, but it just didn't do it for me. But they do see, all... See, in L.A., on all the commercials, they make a huge deal yeah, about that. Real. Right. That's why I knew it was real snow. Ah. Because in the commercials there, you know, Southern California residents, prepare yourselves for <laughs> real snow. I know it's Disneyland and you hate it because you're sick to death of it. But come anyway for real <laughs> snow. You know, it's just... Stop by the hardware store and buy a shovel. Because it's real snow. It didn't do it as much for me. And that's the funny thing, too, I think, is that I guess the people that work at Disneyland every day think, oh, this is the friggin' most awesome thing ever. But 90% it's got to be or more of the people that go to Disneyland are from elsewhere. And so you would think it wouldn't be that big of a deal, you know. But people could be traveling from Hawaii or that's traveling true. from Polynesia. Could be coming or from Florida or Australia South Texas or someplace or yeah. something. So they, they they might think it's neat. But uh, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty that are coming from Chicago and New York and Minnesota and stuff. And they're going, "F you, Disney! This isn't real snow." So there's that. They do a lot of stuff, and they actually change up some of their rides as well. Most the, noteworthy it would be uh, Haunted Mansion, right? Yeah, Haunted Mansion. They do it all up as Nightmare Before Christmas. Jack Skellington is all over the place, and they do uh, they change things around a little bit, which is, for me, that was really cool. Because, A, I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. I really enjoy that whole thing. See, I got the impression that it was the opposite of that. You're like, darn it, my kids didn't get to see the real. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. For Starring me, Eddie Murphy. Uh. <laughs> for me, it was really cool because I'd seen it already. I'd been there three times so it's not a first for me and so it's like uh, it's cool that they switched it up for yeah you. it's cool that they switched it up it's neat to see it's like a, a remix or a cover version of, of a song or something you know you know the original and to hear this other one you can appreciate oh that's kind of cool they did time after time as a punk version that's kind of fun to listen to but for my kids they haven't seen it before so i think i mentioned it in my blog i was saying you know it's like when i was a kid and i heard uh, the tiffany version of the song before, I think we're alone now. Before ever hearing the Beatles version of the song. And then when I hear the Beatles version, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like the Tiffany song. That sucks. There's something really wrong about thinking that way. The one thing that I thought was really missing in the uh, Haunted Mansion is probably my favorite part of all is when you're riding along and then you turn and you look at like those mirrors... At the very and, end. Yeah, and you see yourself, and then there's also the ghost. The sitting ghostly in your, hitchhiker. Yeah, in your chair with you. And they changed that up for Nightmare Before Christmas and had like... Helena Bonham Carter's head. <laughs> they had like a Nightmare Before Christmas style present that was being given to you or something. And so it's like a stick of dynamite all wrapped up in Christmas colors. 
that's what we had in our particular car. And, you know, that's cool for me because I've seen it before, but my kids never saw the ghost in the chair. Which, I loved that the first time I went through I was like, wow, that is so cool. And how the frick did they do that? And that's awesome. I don't know. There's there's something to be said. Maybe if you're going for your first time, don't go in December. They do that with it. It's a Small World as well. They changed that up. And maybe that was better. See, I have a real problem with It's a Small World. I think most people do. Yeah, it's... It's something that children have no problem with. Yeah. But as an it's, adult, it's grating because it's... It's repetitive. It's an 11-minute... And it's long. ...extended mix of talk-talk. Yeah. Talk. Because <laughs> while we were waiting in line, for some reason, my youngest daughter had this song in her head. It's a small world after all. And she sat there when it's a small world after all. It's a small. And that's all she's saying. She's saying this over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I was just Why thinking. Why did you adopt her? <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, do I need to yell at my kid here? <laughs> or do I just tune it out and let her have a nice day? And so it's kind of like that when you go on the ride. You know, at a certain point, you're like, holy crap, don't they say anything else? And they did say something else at Christmas time. They mix in It's a Small World with Jingle Bells and some other Christmas tunes. I don't remember if I really enjoyed It's a Small World after all when I was younger. I don't think I ever, wow, that was great. It was just like making jerk and off motions because it's fairly, uh, you got to be a pretty young child to think it's neat. But yeah, they really did it up all Christmassy. There was a lot of lights. There was extra stuff thrown in. Santa Claus was in there. And you know, they ought to have, and maybe they did, the version of Santa Claus for each one of these countries. I don't think that. There was a big Santa Claus thing at the start. And then as you went through, the thing that just kind of amazed me is how you're going through the whole world, all the different countries. And as you go through, the song is always in sync. You know what I mean? You never have a spot where all of a sudden... You know, you're hearing Spain singing and they're off now with the people singing in the Netherlands. Yeah, that doesn't happen. It's it's like one in sync thing. And as as you float through from place to place, they're always in sync. And even when it gets to the very end, which I was really kind of impressed with, there's a big finale of the song as it all swells and it gets really big and everything. And even that stays in sync somehow, although... It sure seemed like they sang it slower just and bigger. You. I know it should be me just making jerking off motions in the air when I go through this, but for some reason I really liked it. And maybe it's because it's been a while since I last went on it. Well, And also maybe you're seeing it through the eyes of your children. It could be that too, and them having their first uh, chance at it. This may not be a good comparison, but fireworks don't really do it for me anymore. Right. But I imagine if I had like a two-year-old and a four-year-old or whatever, and this was their first time of seeing fireworks and going, <gasps> and all that, suddenly it would be new for me again, too. Right. It's just like, wow, yeah, you're right. That was a good one. I think sometimes it depends on how cool the fireworks are, too. I mean, you can go to fireworks shows that are just like the one you went to last year and just like the one the year before. And then you can go to one where they paid a lot of money for these fireworks, and you're seeing stuff that you've never seen before. And you're like, whoa, that was awesome, you know, kind of a thing. But yeah, I totally uh, see what you mean. It's like the first time I showed Never Ending Story to my kids. And I was able to love it all. Oh, wait. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> tell me what you see. That movie is so awful. Holy crap. It was unbelievable how poorly it stood the test of time. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, we went to Disneyland. The kids got to see the remix version. They heard the Tiffany version <laughs> of the song first. And maybe that'll make the next time they go all the cooler. I don't know when that's going to be. It's not going to be anytime soon, most likely. Now, you did go on Pirates. We went on Pirates. Yes, that I've, has. that's another thing we can uh, talk about because, yeah, they've changed things up. I've never seen it since the remix, since the re... <laughs> what did they the call re, the new Enterprise? Re, the, the refit. I've the, never seen it since the refit. The reimagination, the re-envisioning. Um, although there was a refit when I lived there where they bowdlerized the friggin' ride, you know, to make it so that the Pirates weren't reaching for the girl's buttocks anymore and, right. and just had to make it safe for America or something. Like that. <laughs> and and I was disgusted by that. Now, I don't know. I mean, obviously people in Los Angeles are a little more liberal minded, but it just bothered me so much because I was like, you know, I've loved this since I was a child and I never had lewd thoughts or thought, you know, that this was <laughs> encouraging rape or, or, you know, drinking or any of that silliness that they felt like they had to clean up. 
obviously that's all gone now, right? It's it's all Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean. It, it's not as different as you might think, to tell you the truth. They only put in some things. The very start, you come through and there's a big pirate ship that's having a shooting match with the uh, fort that's on you know the land, and the captain is now Barbosa, and he's shouting and saying stuff and he, he'll he say oh no, no, jack sparrow blah 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 i don't remember what the heck they said but you do hear jack sparrow's name a lot and here and there they have a figure that's supposed to be johnny depp and there, you know there's a guy looking at a treasure map or something and then johnny depp is coming out of the barrel peeking over his shoulder and seeing the map and uh, then you go over here and they're like, oh, where is Jack Sparrow? We need to get him. And then you see that Jack Sparrow is over there pretending to be a woman or something like that so that they won't get him. And then at the very end, as you're almost done, Jack Sparrow's sitting in a little spot with a bunch of treasure that he's gotten. And, oh, I love being a pirate and look at all this great stuff I got. Thanks, everybody. It's not too bad. I, I don't remember what it was like because it was a long time ago. So I don't know how much it has changed. But I'd be willing to bet that those guys were all there to be Begin with, and they just changed them from who they were, random pirates, to now this is Jack Sparrow. But they've done that with a lot of rides. When all the times that I'd been there before, they had the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. It is now the Tarzan Treehouse. They had the Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea Underwater Adventure. Right, and now that's the Finding Nemo submarine. And the friggin' submarine captain now has an Australian accent. <laughs> which is interesting we don't like australians or? no it's just well i'm no no, no I'm, that was a statement uh, we don't like <laughs> oh <Australia>. sorry <laughs> and like big thunder mountain oh they've changed that too yeah it's now the race to which mountain it has the rock and in, instead of the, the the part where the boulder's gonna fall down the rock comes out instead you know because he's a rock and oh no. that's <laughs> such a shame i hate it when those things happen Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> well, at least the down and out in Beverly Hills ride is still kept exactly still as the good way as it, it was. As it was in yes. But uh, the thing that I think was the most strange change of all, probably, is when I went there last, it was early 90s still, and they didn't have Splash Mountain yet. And now they have Splash Mountain, and it's based on the Song of the South. This is a new ride or new ish ride. To me, it's new, yeah. Based on the Song of the South. I, I mean, I don't think you can even get that movie. I don't think you can rent it because, like, that's got the Tar Baby in it and stuff. That's way out of political correctness, and you can't even talk about that movie. And yet they made a new ride based on it? Don't understand that at all. So are your children just confused yeah, when they, they see no, Br'er Bear and Br'er Rabbit? Yeah, no freaking idea who Br'er Bear, <laughs> Br'er Rabbit, and Br'er Fox were and what the heck is going on. And The songs you know, are fun. I think for its... 50th anniversary or how old that movie is they should just re-release it in the theaters and see what happens <laughs> now i know that there's a chance that people would be like oh f no big anklevich <laughs> that ain't right at all man but at the same time people might say you know what we were wrong this is a really cool flick <laughs> you know what's it's actually like, going to happen the is... kids around let's go see that again that was neat what will actually happen is your uh, your uncle's uh, group uh, will boycott it because they use the r word or something it'd be it'd be something completely unexpected somebody would be like no they they said this was retarded but the mystique of that movie because it's been gone for so long right might draw a lot of attention and a lot of viewers, you know, and people that was like, yeah, I haven't seen that in 31 years or whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's go see that again. Yeah. I, I don't know. Now, I understand Disney is afraid of controversy because people find controversy. People yeah. invent controversy all the time and Disney don't, don't want – Disney doesn't. Disney don't want it. Disney doesn't want to uh, be accused of purposely generating controversy. Uh, but it's something that we talk about a lot, the intention – Right, really should be taken into account, and I and I'm certain that Walt or all the other people that worked on that film meant no disrespect, meant no no slight, meant nothing, but just a different shade of entertainment. Yeah, you know, it, it's I, interesting. I, I would imagine that there are people that watch the Three Caballeros and they are offended by that, or some of these that just you know have a character named Paco with a cigar or whatever. Am I wrong? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, I'm probably wrong. Okay, well, Arlo yeah. Edo T can edit. No, oh, he can't. He's long dead. But yeah, it's interesting. I just don't understand why they added that ride. 
You didn't like the ride? Oh, I loved the ride. I thought it was great, but I just don't, you know, why did they base it on the Song of the South? It doesn't make any sense that they would do that when they're retrofitting the rides that were just fine. It's not like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea book has gone away. Maybe the movie, uh, uh, which I had never, ever seen, maybe there was a movie that they did, but... Oh, holy crap. This is so timely. Dude, Hollywood Reporter this week, Disney Parks announced Splash Mountain to be remade as Tron Legacy Mountain. (laughs) Wow. That is timely. It was about time, though, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Wait, gonna, wait, is that what I think they're going to do that to Space Mountain, actually. you got to be in Tomorrowland for that. You know, you're in the wrong. There were some other things, you know. Uh, I was kind of bummed out the last time that I went to Disneyland. They have those folks that dress up as the random characters of Disney. The animated characters, right? Right. They have the guy wearing the Donald Duck suit or the Mickey Mouse suit or the Winnie the Pooh suit or... The girl dressed as Cinderella or, or whatever. The huge jugged Mary Poppins. <laughs> when I was there last, these people just came out. You know, I don't know. They just had random doors here and there around the park. And they would just come out the door and they have somebody with them. And they go and they just walk around and meet the people in the middle of the park. They don't have some special place. But this time that I went... They had places set aside with special little Winnie the Pooh kind of a background with little honey jugs that are tipped over and stuff. And uh, by the way, that Mel Gibson's favorite pet name for police officers, honey jugs. Yeah, um, they have these kind of things set aside, and there's one of those stupid switch back and forth lines, and you have to stand in the line to get your picture with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too. That's the sequel. Two as in T-W-O. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they have a princess encounter area. Or s- something like that that you go and you stand in a friggin' line so that you can get your picture taken with the princess. And my daughter, she saw these people and they would open those doors that they used to come out of and then they just go and meet and greet with the folks that just happen to be around And they're bringing them out now and, like, sneaking them through the line and getting them to the picture spot. And as they're bringing them through, my daughter sees them, runs over, hugs them. They're like, hey, get out of here, kid. They have bodyguards now. Yeah, they're, like, kicking her away. You got to pay your money or what. And that's another thing that they do in this line is they have their own photographer there taking pictures of your kids. And then they give you a little card. Oh, go pay money for this picture. At least they still allow you to take pictures with your own camera. So, you know, you're not screwed into having to pay $30 for one print of the picture picture that they took or something like that but i thought that really kind of sucks the scheduled thing or the designated place thing the designated schedule removing the element of surprise not being able to just walk down the path and go oh there's mickey mouse i'm so excited run over and give him a hug and take your picture you know that's gone or you're like, there's Peter Pan, or there's uh, Goofy, and you run over and you give Goofy a hug. Or you're like, hey, there's Basil of Baker Street. Oh, wow. And you run over and you give him a hug and you, you know. Wait, Basil of Baker Street. Oh, from the African-American cauldron, right? No, uh, that was Shluwinagagagag. No, I don't know what the character, the characters for that show had crazy names. No, Basil Baker Street was Great Mouse Detective. Isn't that one of your favorites? I thought that was... It's so much one of my favorites. I don't recall whether I've seen it or not. (laughs) Good. That was a really cool thing that you had with Disneyland, is that you could just see one of those characters at any time. There was a surprise to it. You didn't have to wait in a line for it. You know, there's already enough waiting in line for rides. Do you really want to wait in line so you can get your picture taken with a dork in a suit? Mm. But, But at the same time... Maybe, you know, they remove the element of surprise, but it also enables you to introduce your kid to the character that they love. You know, you've got a little boy, and here comes Tinkerbell. And he's like, ah, mom. The little boy runs into Tinkerbell. You know, <laughs> again, how thrilled would he be? He's oh. probably going to have an erection if he sees it. Come on. Yes, okay. So he runs <laughs> several times into Tinkerbell. <laughs> Look at that little that little outfit made out of freaking leaves or whatever, dude. Holy All crap. All right, bad example. But... <laughs> I don't know, like, okay, I went to Disneyland. The last time I went uh, was with my niece when she was five, and there were a couple of characters. She wanted to meet Ariel, so we knew where to go to meet Ariel. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, oddly enough, we met the, the Wicked Queen oh. from 
uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the the mirror oh, okay. mirror on the wall queen, and she was really really cool because she stayed in character and she pretended oh. to be evil and, uh-huh. and you know tried to tempt my niece to the dark side and so you know it's like <laughs> join me and we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the magic kingdom. Wow. Uh, anyway, I, I just thought that that was really neat that she stayed in character and 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 I, and I don't suppose we would have accidentally run into her had, had they done it the old way. At one point, we saw Goofy walking just through the park, and I ran up to him and I said, "Hey, can we get a picture?" I don't think Goofy turned me down, but you know, one of those chaperones was just like, "No, get out of here! He's done. He's, he's on his lunch break right now. You want to meet Goofy? Come back at one forty-five. Fuck you!" And I was just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and fuck you, little girl. And I was just like, "What the crap, man?" And so I guess I understand your ire, but and and, and, and if you don't mind, can we interrupt this? For a special news bulletin. Oh, sure. We had a terrible accident ago, oh. like a couple hours ago, I guess. Uh, do you care to tell the audience what it is? Uh, it, the, the, the quality of the show uh, is going to decrease greatly from this point <laughs> on. Please tell them why. Yeah, there was some operator error involved here. We went to look up a, uh, a character's name on the internet to make sure we got it right. I hit pause on the record, and then somehow when we came back and recorded the rest of our show, I did not unpause this show. And so we talked for a good hour, and it was such good stuff. It was was, Parsec-worthy entertainment. I believe you cried. I did. I I laughed until I cried, actually. And so, yeah, uh, that's all gone, though. So I hope our trying to recreate it, which is... Always a bastardized version of anything when you try and recreate the magic that you captured or didn't capture originally. So, yeah, hopefully there, there's something of worth still involved. And if we say something twice, sorry about that because we, we're not exactly sure what we've said already and what we haven't. Yeah, it's frustrating because a couple of the jokes that I've made twice, you don't laugh this time. <laughs> and I know that we have listeners out there that may appreciate the joke, but because you don't laugh, I think, oh... That wasn't funny <laughs> kind of thing. And and so, you know, it makes me all the less willing to repeat a joke right. this time around. But, you know, hey, it sucks that that's happened. And it happens so much. And it's got to happen with everybody that has a podcast or any creative endeavor. It's just – it's life. But uh, we love our listener. We love Wendy so much. Who is the <laughs> – is it Wendy that lives since to – that gets my go? It might be. Yeah, I think Wendy might be the only one. I'm not sure. Uh, we love her so much that we're willing to do this again. Yeah, we're going to give it a shot. And the, uh, you know what? I will try and recreate the racial slurs as eloquently <laughs> as I did the first. <laughs> Good luck. So anyways, I, I don't know if I've said this before or not, but uh, I mean, we went to the princess encounter or whatever they call it. They say that there's at least three princesses there or whatever at any time. But there was a big line to get into it. And my daughters are just like, you know... It's weird because they were so excited about meeting these kind of things. And they even had like little autograph books. Yeah, that's something new where that, they can make money. Somewhere. Yeah, they bought some separately and brought them with them. And they'd even Ooh. taken little stickers that they had found at the dollar store and gone through and stuck stickers of each character on each page. And then we completely forgot to bring those with us and left <laughs> them at home. And the enthusiasm for that whole thing, I guess, drained away when they saw the line and they found out they'd probably have to wait a little while to uh, get in to see these princesses. They're like, yeah, screw that, Dad. We're not, you know, half it. We're not interested. And F you too. Wait, that was what Goofy's handler said. Sorry, I was <laughs> confusing the stories. Uh, so yeah, we didn't get a single picture of them with any of those princesses. So they let you take your own picture. You don't. They have do. To pay. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, they do like- have a paid photographer there. And they take your picture and then they give you a little card and like go to the website or, or go here buy a print. And then later we also found Pluto at uh, the Santa Claus thing they had going on there at a ra- the real reindeer there too that you could look at and maybe even pet if they got close enough I guess I don't know but Santa Claus was mobbed by a line and I thought oh, should we get a picture of the kids with Santa Claus and they, yeah it's a no, long you can do Santa that Claus here at, yeah they have them at every mall maybe we'll just skip that but 
Pluto was standing there, and he, you didn't have to wait in the line for that one, at least. So that was kind of cool. But well, see, I understand that it's uncomfortable for people to wear these costumes. You know, okay, from from my little experience oh. of doing it for two days, it's it's hot in the suit. The head gets really, really heavy, and it, it just uh, becomes uncomfortable around your neck and your shoulders. It's, uh, uh-huh. Spending any time next to Paris Hilton gets really uncomfortable around uncomfortable. your genitals, and it's just so I can understand that them saying. You know, don't take a picture with my guy. He's off right now, or whatever. But it just that's that seemed like an uncool thing to do. And I, I have no idea what it would be like to play one of these characters. But to have, see a child's delight in them thinking that you're actually Clarabelle Cow or, or Professor Radigan, wow, that that's got to be pretty cool. I, I, I guess I, I don't know. I didn't live around Disneyland, so it wasn't like a possible summer job for me or something like that. But that sort of thing seems like it would be cool. And, and when I mentioned the Wicked Queen, she seemed to really have fun with it. You know, right. just a lot, a lot of laughing and the tempting. And are there a lot of evil characters? Are people dressed as evil characters at, at Disneyland? Do you get a Jafar or? A- I didn't ever see any. At least this time. Uh, are there people dressed as Pixar characters? You see a Nemo or you see a... There was a, a guy in the parade. There was a, actually a few. There was like a guy up on a spaceship looking float that was Buzz Lightyear. And uh, there was also a Woody on a, like a little toy horse kind of thing. I don't think he was on Bullseye. It's just like a rocking horse looking kind of thing. And, and Jesse. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> From what I understand, and I, I, we didn't go there and I've never been there because it's new, but I, from what I understand, there's lots more Pixar-themed stuff in the California Adventure Park than there is in the Disneyland Park. But there was a Buzz Lightyear ride and uh, Nemo. Oh, hey, is that Buzz Lightyear the ride where you keep score? You yeah. Shoot? The kids actually really enjoyed that one. We That was one of the few. I think there was only two rides we went on twice, and that was one of them. That was a kind of a thing we did. We went around the park, tried to get everything early, and then at a certain point, we're like, okay, we've done everything. What do you guys, what did you like the best? What do you want to do again? And one of them picked the Buzz Lightyear ride. And yeah, you have like a little spaceship kind of a thing, and you're going through all these. There's characters everywhere, and there's little targets that you're supposed to be shooting at, and you have these little guns. And it's like a laser tag gun or something. You know, you can see the dot. They probably ought to steam it up. I don't Have you played laser tag in recent years? They like put some kind of like smoke or something into the arena that you're playing in these days. So you actually see a beam that goes out with your laser. It's pretty helpful and it's really cool because it actually looks like you got a friggin' laser like the stormtroopers or whatever. It might have been cool if they'd done that on the ride because then you could see which one actually was your. Instead, you just see the dot on the wall. But there's lots of them because everybody's going through behind you in a big long train. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was cool. You shoot at the targets and your score's right there tallying up higher and higher. And you get off the ride at the end and you can see what your score, how it ranks and how good you are. And there's like, you know, you're a super trooper or you're a super douchebag. And for some reason, I always scored in the super douchebag range. It it didn't even matter what my score was. But, uh, yeah. (laughs) The sadness of doing these jokes over is so terrible, isn't it? (laughs) You didn't laugh this time. It must be a bad joke. I'm sorry. I just, I, for some reason. And, and yeah, that's the other terrible thing about doing it over is I'm trying to remember where this conversation went the first time. And, From here to and, there. And yeah, I just. So you went on everything. You Everything that you wanted to. Yeah, everything that we wanted to. We didn't go on everything. We didn't go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or the Alice in Wonderland ride. Some of those really story centric type rides where you just ride around on a little car and then hey look there's captain hook and there's peter pan and this is what happened in the movie and hey we're done we kind of skipped over those but we did hit all the big main rides especially like the th- there's the what three or four big roller coasters i guess three roller coasters and then there's uh there's three roller coasters at there's Disneyland? space mountain there's the matterhorn and there's big thunder mountain okay and then there's... Wait, wait. They didn't update the Matterhorn yet. Did no, they? no. Matterhorn is, I would say, probably exactly the same as what it was when I went the first time when I was like okay. eight or seven years old. Thank goodness. Oh, wait. No. They actually changed the Abominable Snowman has been no. switched out. Yeah, they put in a Gantu, that big fishy looking dude from Lilo and Stitch. What and the he goes, Yeah, it's not quite as good, but, you know, they had to update it to something. No, no, 
that there was an abominable snowman in Monsters Incorporated they could have put oh, up there. Oh, that's right. That's crap, dude. You, seriously, they put a Lilo and Stitch character in there? <laughs> Who even remembers friggin' Lilo? I, dude, I am outraged. Who do I call? The Wait, Ghostbusters. are you joking around? Yeah, I'm joking around. Oh. Um. <laughs> now, see, I wonder if my mock outrage was as convincing this time as the first time. <laughs> yeah, they just have the abominable snowman. Were your kids at all scared on the matter? No, they weren't. Because, see, that's that's something that when I took my niece, she was terrified by the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs ride. It's a baby ride. And she was really, really afraid of it. Now, it's possible that the Wicked Queen like <laughs> leaned in and said, you know, when you go on the Snow White ride, I'm going to cut your fucking throat. <laughs> or something like that. And he's like, if you tell anyone, I'm going to kill your mom. And stuff like that. So she was really afraid. But I didn't get that. What was there to be scared of? But she She's was like, come on, come on. Like, no, no, no. Nice. No, they weren't afraid. The the Matterhorn's still really cool. And yeah, like they, they still have the folks in like the later hosen looking oh, cool. outfits and all that kind of stuff. And for some reason, the woman at the teacup ride was also wearing later hosen. I'm not sure how that fits in anymore. Maybe just everybody in the fantasy land area has, has to wear later hosen. The later hosen is cool. Isn't they, it? It's cool. It may not fit in with Alice in Wonderland, but it's still cool. So there's that. Yeah, no, the abominable snowman, he still spins around, but instead of roaring at you, he just says, I got more snow cones. No, it's lemon. <laughs> See, the one scatological joke in that, they should have put that in the trailer as I get those DreamWorks Jagoffs to come. <laughs> the, you know, speaking of the Matterhorn and Space Mountain and all those various roller coasters, I mean, none of them are really crazy. You call them roller coasters. I, I never even thought to call them that. That's weird. Oh, what would you call it? I'd just call it a, a Disneyland ride or an attraction or something like that. To me, a roller coaster is like something for grown-ups or this a scary ride. And, and I don't know. I guess the Matterhorn is scary. Scary, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't go upside down. There, they, there are no rides. There's no rides. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think they have one in that California adventure. I don't know if they have more than one. But, but the have, Disneyland rides aren't about that. Yeah, they're not about that. And that's the thing that I was going to say that's really cool is that – with a Disneyland ride, yeah, there's roller coasters, but they're not just a roller coaster. It's not like, hey, did you go on the Colossus? It goes upside down twice in a row. It's so awesome. Or when I was a kid, you know, I used to go to Great America uh, Amusement Park. And they had lots of roller coasters. And every year they were like making a new one. And then they're making a new one. And, and they're trying to take it to the next level every time. And now you're on a roller coaster where you don't sit down in the car. You're actually standing in the car. And they just latch you in that way. And then the next year they've got another Top Gun jet coaster or something. And it doesn't look like a jet. It's not themed that way at all. It's just now, now you're sitting and your feet are hanging off the bottom of the thing. And, you know, they're just trying to come up with some kind of gimmick like that to make the roller coaster neater. But with Disney, they don't have to go over the top like that. Instead, it's not about that feeling of yeah. your nuts going. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not about the fact where you're like, uh, maybe I'll find my stomach again when we come all the way back around and stop. Then it'll still be waiting for me there at the start. It's a story place and they make a theme out of it. You know, the Matterhorn is you're supposed to be on a bobsled coming down the Matterhorn and you see the abominable snowman and you're going around all crazy like you're on a sled run or Space Mountain where it's pitch black in there and they have like the lights shining around like they're stars and you're supposed to be like you're flying through space in a spaceship. Yeah, they, they even make like the line that you stand in <laughs> right. entertaining. Like the Indiana Jones line with all the skulls and the walls and, and the, the, the video with Sala in it. Right. Why the F Sala wasn't in the last Indiana Jones movie, I don't get it. But the, the theme is entertaining people while they're waiting. All the employees are dressed. Right, they have costumes. You can tell what ride they work on by the costume. <laughs> yeah, and they have drinking fountains in the lines. That's really cool. I mean, it wasn't such a big deal when we were there in December, but I remember as a kid, middle of the summer, that's really helpful to be able to just be like, oh, a drinking fountain, how about that? But yeah, you know, it's different, and I think it's so much cooler, to tell you the truth, that, that you know, it takes so much more imagination. It's not just engineering, but they... Imagineering. Yes, there you go. I mean, they have the engineering, but they also put the imagination into it and make it that much more. You wait all that time in line, 
and you get more than just a quick drop down a big hill or something like that. You know, you get extra stuff. Except for the Indiana Jones ride. <laughs> and that friggin' ride, every time you come into the big room where there's all the fire and the skulls and stuff, I'm just like, stop the ride so I can look around. For, please, say, oh, it's over again? I don't know. I thought that one was nice and long personally. But man, that was probably because it was the first ride that we went on. And so that was one of those things that all the websites recommended that we should do is pick a ride that's likely to have a long line and make that the first thing that you go to so you can just jump right in there and go. Because it fills up later. Than and yeah, time. because by later it'll be hours long. So we made sure to hit one of those and we picked Indiana Jones because it was close and our kids love Indiana Jones. So Sort of. Not enough to recognize <laughs> it. Yeah, I, I think the point we were trying to make, at least the first time through on this, was just the, 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 there's something different about the mentality of the Disneyland rides and about the whole the way that the place is set up. It's unlike other amusement parks. Just uh, the cleanliness, how clean the darn place is. <laughs> That's it, true. It's kind of amazing to me. I um, know it's not going to sound as new to you this time around in the recording, but there's that story about Walt Disney when they were first setting up Disneyland he would go to amusement parks and he would like I don't know buy a corn dog for somebody or something like that and he would give it to him here I'm Walt Disney have a corn dog I can afford it or whatever and they would take the oh thanks and they would eat the corn dog and then he would watch him walk off and wait and see how far they would walk holding the trash before they would just throw it on the ground Oh, and then he would send somebody to beat the shit out of that person. <laughs> well, he was actually just conducting an experiment to see just how far people were willing to carry this trash. And then when he did Disneyland, he would make sure that there was garbage cans within that distance. Every 55 feet or whatever, there's a garbage can in Disneyland. So people are that much less likely to just drop something on the ground. And I think on top of that, he would have extra employees running around with those little broomer things, the little sweepers and the garbage thingers that they would pick them up with. So yeah, that was one of his big things is that, yeah, he wanted to make sure he used to go to old amusement parks and we're talking old, like before being a litter bug was ever even a term that had been coined. And, uh, you know, he would just think, gosh, these places are filthy and foul. How could people stand it? And so he wanted to make sure that his park was not that way and yeah it's still the first time that you told this i was so horrified by your description of the people just throwing things on the <laughs> ground at disneyland that i may have overcompensated <laughs> with my joke this time. but you were just like no that's the way that people were yeah in I mean, those days is i don't need this anymore on the ground yeah well it was before the days that like i said you know before there was that commercial with the crying indian that sees the people throw the garbage out their window or whatever, and he's he's there crying, that, that iconic commercial. People have learned. I think that was a very powerful commercial. I mean, the fact that all these years, it was before my time, that commercial. Yeah. And I know that we commercial. Know we still it. talk about it. it. Just the idea of offending Mother Earth, offending people that have a connection to this planet and stuff is just, I, I have a real problem with people that just throw <laughs> crap. Right. Here's a question for you, and this is so off topic. It's on the topic that we're on now, but off topic for the show. But littering, right? What about if you throw an apple core? Is that littering? Is throwing food out littering? Well, at Disneyland, yeah. Uh huh. But if you're in the woods or whatever, I, that's probably fine because the circle of life, man. Right. But I'm sure there are tons of like squirrels and stuff that live in Disneyland and probably thousands of rats i don't know <laughs> certainly the cast of uh, great mouse detective <laughs> there you go but uh if you toss an apple core in disneyland you're an asshole okay but if you do what about it if you're in just the driving desert down or whatever, I, the I think freeway think and you toss it off fine. i mean not well, tossing i'm off, an sorry. expert at tossing off <laughs> don't toss off while you're on the freeway that's not okay because yeah. you're likely to wreck and both hands on um. the wheel, please sir <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I remember one time I was uh, driving with a friend and she tossed a apple core out the window when she finished. And then we pulled up to the light and somebody pulled up next to us and went, did you just throw your apple core out on the ground? Uh, Yeah. And he goes, not good. We're just like, uh, (laughs) we're a little weirded out (laughs) being confronted by this. And we're like, it was just an apple core. Not good. Uh, Okay. See ya. (laughs) <laughs> and the not good guy, no pants. <laughs> <laughs> no pants. But that's a different subject. That's I, unique to the sequel. There you episode. go. 
you know, we've been talking for a while, so it's probably. I think we may have to split this another again time because there's still more to say. Yes, and that's, well, it's true. We have to say. Oh, I know we've been over this the first time, but you didn't hear it. It's been <laughs> lost uh, at least six more times. That's so right. yeah, let's let's so, stop. We'll take a break and come back and apologize once again for. I know this joke isn't funny, but it sure was the first time. <laughs> All right, so I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm very embarrassedly Rish Outfield. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. We saw Goofy, and Goofy had like his handler or his bodyguard or whatever you call it, and they were going toward the. <laughs> Cat just came out the door. <laughs> I saw the door open on its own, and I was like, "Poltergeist again!" <laughs> Poltergeist is back. No, just the cat but going down to sleep with the one person that it loves in this entire house. Satan. <laughs> yes, Satan does have a room downstairs.